Hi guys, it's Terry up at uh, Gwyn Greenwood's job, and we're building a uh, studio, kind of workshop studio for her. So we're doing concrete flat work preparation. And I wanted to show you guys a controversial subject about putting the plastic above the foam or below the foam. I choose below the foam because, check it, look at this, take a look at this thing. It's like, see those little water droplets underneath there? Well, that's water vapor condensing on the bottom of the plastic. And so you don't want that water vapor, you don't want it migrating through the building. You also don't want it to be on top of the of the foam board, you know, uh, or getting into the foam board, I should say. Because the foam board, when it's wet, loses its, its uh, R value. Now this particular foam board, extruded polystyrene, probably can handle quite a bit of moisture load before it fails you know, or fails its R value at least. But it's, it's just better to keep the water vapor out of the building. So Idaho Code says you have to put the plastic under the substrate. They consider the, or uh, not under the substrate, above the substrate, sorry. Under the slab, above the substrate. And they consider that, um, they consider the plastic a substrate. Or the foam a substrate, I'm trying to say. Anyway, can't talk today. <laughs> A lot of work putting down rebars but yeah it pisses me off that these officials you know make me in idaho at least we're in montana thank god put uh, put plastic on top of the foam board well you can imagine you know all the penetrations and shit we have to deal with plumbing and the like piers you have to put more plastic in those but anyway um the germans make a special tool for installing rain for heat tubes pex tubes that staples the tubing to the top of the of the foam, right? Well, you can't staple to the plastic because you have to defeat the purpose of it. So the Idaho people, uh, quote officials, just haven't thought it through. And it's too bad because, because uh, it makes me embarrassed sometimes to be an American <laughs> in the building industry because we do really stupid things and legally we can't change it. But luckily, this is the Bitterroot and uh, they don't really inspect stuff like this. So anyway, 383 bars, uh, two foot on center, two foot grid. Um, I'm still gonna put more in here. You know, you alternate them, right, for strength. So I'll put my other bars now going this way and they'll overlap, they'll overlap there, overlap here. See how these are alternated? And that's alternated over there. But this is actually not to code, honestly. It's supposed to be 40 times the bar diameter. And this is about a perfect overlap for uh, rebar. But really, um, it's not gonna come loose, right? <laughs> so. So in Montana, luckily we don't have too many earthquakes unless you're close to Yellowstone. But, um, but yeah, anyway, that's my gripe for a day. <laughs> Hope you guys have a really good day. Enjoy the beautiful spring weather and uh, take care. I'll talk to you again. Bye.